Nice. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Sonics. All right. Hey, oh, we're shoot. live, Kyle. You want to do your job? Uh, hey, everybody. Welcome to Murder Hobos Between the Rolls, our fantastic Tuesday night show. Woo! That only three of us could actually show up to, and one of them's the guy who actually runs the whole thing. So I'm I'm sorry, folks. Uh, <laughs> we all apparently have lives except for us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You guys can uh, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter. Uh, if you want to check out some of the stuff we pre-recorded on YouTube, you can do that. We also have a fantastic merchandise. Sh- um, oh, Tiny URL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That um, has some really great stuff. Um, but not really that great because otherwise I would be wearing some sort of merchandise. But you can see Frank and... Scott's drawstring. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Put that down. Put that down. Scott, I understand our colleges are giving those away for free now. Ooh, that's great. That's great. That's good to know. All right. Um, first off, I'm Kyle. Uh, Frank is here, but I'm going to be hosting because I actually read the books. I know oh, what I'm Is that a bingo card about. entry there? Yeah. No, it should be. It, it is on the. Uh, it is on this weekend show. Kyle <laughs> declares how amazing he is. Well, I mean, it's true. But anyway, uh, other than myself, we have such fan favorites as Scott. Scott, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Scott. Uh, All right, am... next week. No, Thank you. <laughs> He's not Carol. <laughs> No, I don't mind. I don't mind at all. Everyone can talk over me, and and that's fine because I have an internal conversation going on all the time that says, I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. I bet TSA loves you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I'm uh, I'm a DM and uh, DM and, uh, sometimes player on the show. Um, I will be um, DMing at GaryCon. I have four... uh, games I'm, I'm uh, playing uh, or hosting or DMing, I should say. And thank goodness they're all, they're all sold out. So that's good to know. I'll, uh, so I have, um, I'll be doing things, which is fun. Have so you, uh, you picked a chair at each of the tables, right, Frank? Yes. I know did. I did. And, and, and we're I'm definitely not, not show, showing up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there. I'm <laughs> <laughs> no, so I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited because it's the first con I've been to since I was probably 12 years old. So, so I, I am, I am excited to go. All right, don't make an old joke, Kyle. Don't make a joke about the dinosaurs. Anyway, <laughs> next up around the table we have David. David, you're kind of a newer face here, but uh, we're happy to have you because then it'd just be these two talking about planes and that suck. But introduce yeah. yourself, please. <laughs> Hi, I'm David. I'm a relatively new player, actually, to d and I've only been playing about 18 months. Uh, I started when I was young, and it didn't really amount to much because not many people played where I lived. So, But I, um, yeah, new fan of the show and proof that dreams really do come true because now I'm on the show. So. When you okay. wish upon a star. <laughs> and finally, Frank, this is your baby that we've taken over and turned into a dumpster fire. But please introduce yourself and tell us what else you do. Thank God. I am Frank, as you know, uh, frequent host of the show, frequent DM. I've uh, been doing it forever. Yes, I, uh, my first uh, players were Fred and Barney. Um, been doing That's it. That's true. They were uh, looking forward to this show because this is Kyle's uh, dream baby or Blake's. We aren't really sure who's going to take the credit for this. I, I think <laughs> it goes well. I think Kyle will take credit for it. Yeah, no, obviously because he's here, does. right? <laughs> yeah. uh, but other than that, uh, welcome aboard. We're glad to have you. If you ever want to seat in place of us or with us, uh, just like David, hit us up and we will get you on the show one way or the other, hook or crook. Scott came back, foolish man. David came back, foolish man. And, you know, we're, I've been you, here the entire time. Kyle and I like are just stupid. Fungus <laughs> on your toe. <laughs> but you know, you show. use that stuff they give you at the pharmacy to paint over it so you can get rid of that toenail fungus, but it never I really. I love that tiny comb. 
that's the best part oh, of that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. But let's get down into the meat of it. Last Saturday, we played the campaign, uh, episode 76, two steps forward, one step back. Can you tell that I keep looking over here to actually read my script? <laughs> yes. It is very funny <laughs> and entertaining. You're thinking of a, a, a successful show, Kyle. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Uh, well, stuff happened during the show. Since I'm the host, I don't have to talk about it. So, Frank, what happened during the show last Saturday? I wasn't really paying attention, honestly. Oh, and it showed in your uh, gameplay. It was uh, fun. Uh, again, we we still have three distinct groups right now. Fortunately, uh, both Ernest and Kyle managed to get their characters, Lucas and Dewey, to a certain town where Carol and the halfling Cola was. Uh, those two threw Carol under the bus to a bunch of centaurs. And so we yeah. could join up faster was the plan. Right, by getting and her arrested and killed. Uh, they've met a lot of people who uh, are uh, <coughs> infected, uh, and that is starting to become a problem for them, especially now that Cola has disappeared. Uh, the best part about the show, in my opinion, was the overwhelming honesty of Carol uh, trying to not pick up the DM hint of pick up the fucking bag, even though it's not yours. The box is in it. <laughs> I, I swear to God, I thought for a moment she was just going to turn it over to the centaurs and I just... That would have been <laughs> great. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, no, this is her bag. Perhaps you can use it to find her. <laughs> <laughs> can you sniff this out like a dog? Uh, they, uh, uh, Cola got drunk on uh, Dr. Robitussin's uh, magic elixir. Yeah, yeah, that was funny. Uh, and yep. uh, let's see, Chris found a whole lot of new friends. And Chris is actually where everybody is supposed to fucking be. <laughs> was that where he was? I thought he was in the town just flying around. Now he is outside Again, of I wasn't paying attention because there's a lot of people there uh, and the military and a bronze dragon. I was going to say a dragon flew over. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of problems in Fulton and you guys may or may not learn why Taryn does not want to go back because she, like Kyle, gave me a rather complete background story and she is not the gonna wanna go back <laughs> well, hey, you could always do what you did in the other campaign and just kill off that character and just get rid of all that back that's true uh blake actually <laughs> made the rounds and met a lot of new fun exciting people and killed some of them. <laughs> so, uh, all in all, it, it was uh, a standard shit show for the campaign, but we're inching closer to some answers that they need and hopefully want, and we'll see how that goes. Yeah. I certainly say as a player, I really enjoyed, uh, 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 and I'm kissing ass right now, get that brown off my nose. I'll send you uh, a uh, stick. I appreciate that along with the 20. <laughs> showcasing that the world is actually going to shit with the undead coming to rise i assume that has to do with the lingering evil growing evil that's happening in the world and uh, i'm gonna make an assumption uh, assuming that we haven't taken care of it oh, oh, hold on. and we get to see that through <laughs> uh, if you would like to check off that mark on your bingo card feel free to <laughs> uh which leads us to the next great invention uh, uh the bingo cards made from last last tuesday's game because mm -hmm, i was sitting last out. Tuesday. you guys came up with that idea it's a fantastic mm -hmm. idea. that's right and it works so well that we actually have two people on the show tonight who watched yes. watched the entire episode the whole thing it's amazing <laughs> it, it's Live working even. Side yep. note, we had 16 original viewers. So nice. thank you. Thank, wow. you for, thank you for tuning oh. in. We appreciate that. That was me. No, I got all 16 of my phone. I am at 12-1. To... <laughs> <laughs> so real for it first, blah, blah, real fast, bringing up the bingo cards. Scott, David, yeah. how did, you do? did you get bingo? Oh, I, I, I did not. To get I was, bingo. I was, David, you go. 
I was so close. <laughs> I had two rows going, and I only had one block left to fill on each one. And those blocks were Mount is Killed and Rules Argument. So towards the end of the show, we I was were like, really Ears. close. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was hoping that you guys rolled initiative on Man of War because technically he would have counted oh, yeah, as yeah. a mount. He was going to die. Yeah. <laughs> he would have counted as a mount. So. We were yeah. very close to Man of War dying and very close to having a rule. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> with with Blake having a rules argument is normally a given. Um, that's that's just that, and it's not really so much an argument. It's just well, extending fair, clarification. Ernie likes to clarify the rules. Okay, too. that's true. Yeah, the <laughs> uh, extended rules clarification. So. Rules. Uh, this game doesn't have any fucking rules. I, you know, I didn't read that in the book. <laughs> you see now, now, now with the thing with uh with uh with the bingo, you see, um, I I would say that you are actually a little bit closer, David, because there was a battle, and in an PC, if you count the skeletons, mm-hmm. right, or the zombies that were brought up, you did have an NPC killed. Uh, so that would have been a diagonal, sure. and then all you would have had to have was doge right that's true that's true i didn't even see that way going nice yeah so so i would have i would have gotten that and th- th- that is one thing i i was not clear about is how we distribute the cards because i i just went to twitter and used that card yeah you know, that's I, all i did too yeah, that's, so <laughs> didn't i send them to you no yeah. really because nope. no so we have 30 different cards for campaign 30 different cards for the one shot and there's a little number down in the bottom right. Uh, and that, so you might want to check your uh, spam filter because I probably sent it from my pornography email uh, to you. But uh, yes, that's, are, that's possible. Yeah, yeah that's there are possible. different cards in different configurations. And this weekend yeah. uh, is a totally different card. It's not the black and white one that David showed you earlier. I think it's a red and white more white so it's easier to write on so if you want one if you want to play this saturday uh hit us up and we will get you a card and i will make sure to get you two uh real cards this time that's right yeah, so we'll check your spam catcher it should be murder hoboner that is Frank's, uh, email. <laughs> damn it kyle that's my private email address <laughs> That is my Viagra pill repository. <laughs> no, but it was fun because you know I I actually was was there and uh, and I could and I could follow along and I had you know like one screen here and one screen here and I was you know clicking things off and rock, marking the time. I made a little PowerPoint presentation. It, I had a blast. It was oh, a lot yeah. of fun. Well, it was wow. a lot of fun. I, David, Kyle, Blake, and I think Carol all came up with that idea, and I just yeah, I ran it was really while good. I was producing it, so I think it yeah. Was- it was really good. Well done, guys. I tell Thank you, Blake, you very much. Drink for it. <laughs> Blake's uh, segment on the show uh, just about filled one row right. by itself. It did. <laughs> That's right, it did. He had a lot of activity. <laughs> oh, yeah, one right after the other. You know, NPC offended, offensive joke, and fight over treasure. I was yeah. like, I'm almost there. <laughs> wow. Yeah. The, the funny thing is, I, I did not have the list in front of me, so I was not, you know, trying to guide anything. I'm just like, yeah, fuck it. If somebody wins, they'll tell me. That's why I was spamming the chat at the end. Yeah. Kill him out. Kill him out. Come on. I was just saying, doge, doge, doge. <laughs> Thinking that someone would say, why is Scott saying doge? And we'd be like, God, right there. <laughs> Look, there's a no, halfling was riding good. a doge. Kill it. So we should continue is what you're saying. Yes. Uh, yes. Definitely. Yes, this, was so. this was a lot of fun. This was a lot of fun. Because this this could be yours. I know. Ooh, oh, shiny. Oh, very shiny. Interesting. Shiny. Mm-hmm. Dibs. Dibs. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, actually, I you can. Cause, uh, That's right. This I will. This weekend is uh, Carol and her New England Patriot fans that are all going to die on the elemental plane of fire. That's right. That's I'm going to get my wife in here, and I'm going to make her play, too. <laughs> and I'm going to keep my kids up, and they're going to play, too. They're all going to have cards. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> Catholic. <laughs> uh, you got to start somewhere. Stack the odds in your favor. <laughs> all right. So. 
it was a terrible episode. (laughs) (laughs) Mid air. That's right. (sighs) Silence. It's beautiful. Silence is golden. (laughs) What were we talking about tonight, guys? Uh, (laughs) All right. So, uh, as everybody mentioned, grab a bingo card, play next time. It's one shot. If you want to go back and grab a bingo card and play the previous saturday's episode you can play but you're not going to win anything nice <laughs> to be you. but it's an entertaining episode maybe i don't know ish it was good it was good all right which leads us into this month's topic <laughs> we're talking about planes everybody I'm not talking about yeah. 747s we're not going to crash anything except when my jokes don't land. How about Your wooden, expectations. one of those wood things? That, yeah. That Ooh. kind of plane? <laughs> I love those planes. Those are my favorite. Provided they're the good I ones. I have no. had many years with those things. As a <laughs> <laughs> no, guys, we're talking about D&D here, and we're talking about the other planes, like the inner planes, the outer planes, the transitive planes, the make-believe planes. They're all make-believe planes. I feel we need an airplane joke here. All right. Frank, (laughs) what's your favorite joke? (laughs) Approach. Pterodactyl. (laughs) (laughs) Blake is way better at those jokes than me. He is so much better. Uh, It's form. I'm a seductor. Oh, God, my pants. So tight. (laughs) He never orders fish at home. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys. We all play in campaigns, and the material plane is big enough. Why, Why do we have all these other things to make it more complicated? Hmm. Why? And what's your favorite? Scott? Let's start with you. Why is there a need for planes? I, I think the reason there's a need for planes would be the same reason that, that you have invested mythology into a, into a fantasy world. So you have to give basically construct belief structure. Um, you have to have an idea that um, in, a, in, a, in a fantasy world, um, you don't have to try, for instance, in the, in, the, in the world we live in today, which is not a fantasy world, this is real life, the idea of faith and the idea of life after death, those are all deeper thoughts. And so we, 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 we try to imagine. Now, in a fantasy world, the, the, the incredible and the fantastical happens on a daily basis. So you don't have to say, I believe this is going to happen. I believe in, in the gods. I believe in this or that. You actually see it. You, it, it's, it's actually right there in front of you. You, you are a practitioner of this. So, <laughs> gosh darn it, I like myself. <laughs> um, sorry. So, so the idea that if, if that's the world that you exist in, well, then where does this come from? Where is the underlying structure behind all of this? Behind all of this? So, it has to be. It has to be the planes, and this is a common trope in, in my understanding of how a lot of fantasy worlds. Uh, were, uh, you know, more or less constructed. Um, you know, from the earliest books that I remember reading, you always had some idea of a multiverse, some idea of a planar understanding, some idea in North mythology you had Valhalla. You went somewhere after you died. That's where the gods lived. That's where the heroes were. I mean, this is, it, it's a common thing for most type of mythological elements, all the way back to Greek, Roman mythology, all of it you know so so it uh it, it's it's something that is woven into the fabric of myth and woven into the fabric of fantasy so that's why I think that's, that's my opinion <laughs> dang it i always press the mute button <laughs> i was like okay <laughs> As for my favorite, because I forgot to answer that, it's Carceri. I, I, I love that one. Uh, I've always loved that. Um, the the idea of Tartarus, the idea of um, uh, the Titans, the idea of, uh, uh, you know, a, a 
jail, basically, in essence. You get there, easy to get to, almost impossible to get out of. Uh, I always liked Carceri. That was that was one of my more, more that, that was probably my favorite plane. Sure. Okay. Frank, question to you, your favorite plane. You can answer that after you answer the bigger question that you talk about ten minutes about. And I don't have to worry about anything. Sure, Only ten four minutes. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um their importance in a campaign. Um do they even need to be there? And how do you frame your how do planes work in your homebrew setting? That's fair. Uh, I, I think Scott touched on a lot of uh, great points. So, Kyle, you have to drink. Uh, it is. It's, <laughs> it's all based about mythology. Uh, and for old school d and uh, like when you're 13 and stupid, uh, it's about finding the gods and killing those fuckers. Because if right. you have stats, you can kill them. <laughs> you have them. stats, you can so, kill them. Yeah. Deities exactly and demigods right. came out, and it's like... We're killing King Arthur. Today. <laughs> uh, but as, that's right. As as for the planes, uh, it, it, you know, it's nice to get out of the rut. Uh, I'm I'm tired of seeing green grass. I don't want to go see the dark under caverns of the drow. Uh, I'm tired of dealing with uh, smelly dwarves. I want to go someplace that exists in Mario Kart. And uh, for the most part, uh, it when we discussed having this concept. Uh, Kyle challenged us to go ahead and write some planar adventures. Now me, I, I had to get ready anyway uh, for a different reason, but I, I took his advice and I have done three, including one that will be Gen Con 2021. Not this year, uh, this year's Aquitania, but next year is uh, the, uh, not Abyss, the Astral Plane. Uh, hmm. so, Coming to a Gen Con near you. Uh, but I've also done two others, one of which is this weekend on the Elemental Plane of Fire, and one two weeks after that, which hopefully David and Scott will be in, and I'm not going to say what that is, uh, because it's a shit show, too. Uh, <laughs> but You're going to Celestia. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. Make an angel. You're, you're going to hang out in, in what is called uh, <clears throat> Springfield. We aren't sure what plane that's actually on. And you're going to meet a yellow NPC named Homer. <laughs> uh, but with the planes, it gives you a, a better opportunity to go ahead and introduce something unusual. Uh, the astral plane, the ethereal plane. Movement is weird. Uh, you can still kind of breathe and get along. If you go to the elemental plane of Earth, you're going to be crushed to death unless you, you have some kind of magic. Uh, fire, Carol, hint, you're going to sweat your ass off. Uh, if you go to one of the cold places, uh, you're going to freeze to death, uh, and you're going to meet new, exciting people and kill them. Uh, that, to me, is what the planes are for. Uh, but really, growing up, as soon as deity, deities and demigods came out, it was, let's go kill some gods. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and we got our butts handed to us. Uh, but my favorite would have to be some of the quasi planes because mm. they're a crapshoot. Uh, you got fog, you got smoke, uh, you've got the dirt plane. You've got you've got a variety of them. And I think when you're dealing with planes. The DM should only be limited by his or her imagination. Uh, I joked about doing a Simpsons, but quite honestly, uh, you know, let, let's go full Star Trek and say you're going to a plane where there's nothing but Nazis. You're going to a plane where there's gangsters. Uh, and what it does is it helps break up the monotony or the mundane aspect of Okay, let's go to the killer forest and kill something that we've killed three. Get on your horse, yeah. shine your shield. Let's go kill yeah. the dragon. We're gonna do this, princess. Instead, <laughs> you're in the multiverse with Stewie Griffin, and you're just like, holy shit! I don't know how to fire a gun. <laughs> so it, it, it offers a lot of opportunity for uh, just ape shit business. Okay, you're in the world that's upside down. And all the crap that you have in your pockets keeps falling out, and you have to go chase it. Uh, you are in a modern period. You are in the Roman Empire. You are in the Celtic nation. Uh, you are in the Egyptians. Uh, so it's something that players can say, 
oh, okay, I watched that on the History Channel or Discovery Channel. Hashtag history, right. hashtag discovery. Uh, <laughs> and they can go ahead and relate to it. And they're like, oh, shit, I saw this thing on Osiris. I want to see that. And fortunately, deities and demigods had his stats. So that's right. Let's go kick his ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so me, it sounds you're really into the uh, multiverse kind of deal with the planes then, as opposed to there's one material plane and then your plane of fire, your heaven, your hell. Yeah. and the various levels there you want to have everything is a different plane I, I think with murder hobo inc the stranger it is the better it is received and the more it keeps you guys on your toes i would really like to run a scenario and maybe we will where you go to a plane and you meet your exact opposite <laughs> <laughs> three good-looking women and a hairy toad yes <laughs> you, know, you know she's going to figure out the hell. <laughs> you know she's going to come back to haunt you. Uh, yeah, I, I think that would be a fun one. That or just a pop culture. You know, let's men in black this and throw you in the 1970s and see how that free love treats you. Yeah, yeah, that would be interesting. But yeah, the quasi the quasi planes of fog and smoke are my favorite because the fiend folio, uh, for all its tr troubles and uh, downplay. Uh, it had their masters, <laughs> uh, Lord of the Winds, uh, uh, Lord of the Earth. Those guys were kind of gruesome. So that's my answer. Very much so. Not 10 minutes, uh, but, you know, do your job, it, Kyle. It was pretty good. Do Gosh. Your pay. Do your pay. Uh, <laughs> I forget. What was, what was the question I was asking people? Uh, David's turn is, uh, what do you think the planes are relevant to in a D&D &D campaign? What is your favorite and why? There you go. Well, I'll just go ahead and take over moderating skills. Thanks for Thanks, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, let me throw up the bullshit gif for a second. Uh, 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 oh, don't there, worry, there, I think there, that's there, also there, square uh, on bingo. We, so. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> nice. Um, as a relatively new player, I mean, this is exciting. Unfortunately, I have no basis to, to really base a solid opinion on because sure. like uh for example i missed out on uh the other editions that included planescape spelljammer um you know and you know this is exciting to me as mm -hmm. uh as a new player i mean the whole uh dra dragon hunt sword and board thing yeah that's fine and you know it's excitable but this is really exciting uh, going to a world where, you know, the environment itself can just kill you, you know. Um, also, things like the outer planes fascinate me, you know, um, you know, just traveling the planes, you know, becoming a planeswalker. I mean, that's that's something that's, you know, I mean, that that would just make for a really exciting campaign. Be a space and, pirate space pirate why not <laughs> but like for example um i did a lot of research prior to this show i looked up a lot of videos uh saw he watched web dm i wasn't <laughs> the only one <laughs> but they did bring up a good good point and they touched on all those subjects that that i had just mentioned travel uh how how it goes to your campaign like traveling for existent uh for example I mean, uh, you know, I mean, you could travel there by spell. You can travel there by, uh, you know, magical object. Uh, let's say there's something called the infinite stairway, you know, which is like a portal that turns up. It's kind of like a Narnia kind of thing, Was you know. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> but, all right. We know where he's getting all his stuff from. Yeah. So... So anyway, I mean, this is this stuff is really exciting. I mean, the whole theory of a multiverse being brought into D and D. I mean, this is this is just great. I know there's been other systems that base their entire system upon that, you know, like rifts with palladium and stuff like that. But um, you know, I mean, just the the prospect. I mean, as a new player, I just I was just only familiar a little bit with the cosmology. So, I mean, uh, listen to you guys talk tonight, you know, about different things and that you can build a campaign upon this. I mean, 
it's just like, yeah, I'm all for it. That's right, David. Take notes. You're going to be DM in a couple of weeks here, so get ready. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. You get to write a planner event. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, I'm coming up with the... a great idea. I'm going that way. I don't okay. care. <laughs> <laughs> cue up the uh, dumpster fire meme to go right now. <laughs> so as the planes that you've read about so far, which one has so far piqued your interest the most, would you say? Uh, actually, the outer planes. Actually, outer plane, Which one? Uh, I'm getting specific here. Yeah, you uh, are. For the viewers, <laughs> outer planes is uh, uh, um, essentially the heaven and hell of D D, except they have to make it complicated so it's something usually assigned to each of the alignments save for true neutral so you have your lawful right. good neutral good chaotic good and all around except that true neutral oh, is yeah. there one that really particularly interests you uh not one in particular but uh there are there are also the other planes like the, the mecha yeah. like the mechanists and stuff yeah, I loved okay. it. But, no, cool. I'm not trying to screw you on that. It's just like no, no, um, that's cool. Yeah, no, uh, that's that's what we do here. You're doing good. Uh, oh, thanks. <laughs> Live up to the show's expectations. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, as Scott was mentioning, and David, you actually hit on it really good. The cosmology of it and how the planes interact with your sword and board fighting a dragon kind of world. Do you guys think that um, it should be something similar to The Witcher, where these spheres oh, touch to go on the world? Again. That's <laughs> right. I actually saw that, and I'm like, oh, Scott's on tonight. I'm going to mention that. <laughs> where these spheres are just twirling around, and every once in a while they touch on it, and you have access right. to the plane of fire for a short time. Yeah. You think like Norse mythology with uh, Yirgr the, 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 the tree. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah. I can't pronounce anything. Uh, or maybe you decide to go with more Marvel, where uh, it's instead a rainbow bridge, and the planes are just different planets that you have to travel through through this beam of psychedelic light. Or maybe you're running through a forest and you go underneath a tree branch, and you're suddenly in the Fey Wild, just like that. How easy? Do you make these planes accessible? And since Frank is yawning, you go first. Uh, for me, I think it should be <laughs> fairly restrictive uh, because one of the things I noticed when I was doing the Scott David one is if there's a way in, there's a way out. Uh, and how do you <laughs> keep the ninth level of hell from just coming into Cathaway and kicking the shit out of everybody. Uh, and I, I think I came up with a reasonable idea. I don't want to go into it because uh, that would be a major spoiler. Uh, but I, I think it should be restricted just for that reason. I mean, if it were easy, anyone could do it. I mean, do you really want head wound Harry <laughs> running around <laughs> the outer planes? Absolutely. I, I think not. Um, Mama Udu would collect... Uh, oh. more ears from more aliens, she'd be a freaking predator. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, maybe have a predator plane on there and you get to meet Carl Weathers before he goes to the Mandalorian. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's an easy one. Uh, but I, I think it should be restricted, and I think it should be at least quasi-difficult. Because if you throw a fourth level into Elysium, some giant horned elk is just going to tear his head <laughs> off. Uh, campaign's over, bitch. Uh, next thing you know, you've got an elk with about five PC heads on him roaming around the feathered plains. Uh, so I, I think, and especially with the three that I've done, um, not saying they're great or anything, but it is the minute you step onto that plane, your ass is grass, and that is filled with lawnmowers. And, guns. Uh, and uh, it gets deadly quick. Uh, so I, I, I really like the restrict restrictive nature because, you know, this isn't a bus stop. Because <laughs> 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 you, you can have a whole lot of 
weird hobos uh, like the ones Ernie offended wearing his murder hobo shirt on the Bart in San Francisco. And, oh no! Uh, and, uh, <laughs> right. We don't want that. Yeah, he, uh, he, he was wearing his murder hobo ink shirt and he was getting strange looks, and then he realized that these people were probably hobos and did not <laughs> did not take uh, no. his, uh, his station ah. well. Uh, but yeah, I, I think if they, no, they, if they had access hobos. to Twitch, they would love this show. Let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> You right. know, they, you should have put it on their uh, Mad Dog 5050 bottle. You know, give them stickers. <laughs> give them Absolutely. Give them stickers. Yeah, promote that shit. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I would say restrictive uh, mm-hmm. for that reason, so that Joe Schmo can't get in and the hordes of evil undead can't be unleashed. Otherwise, you need sure. Ghostbusters. So now, do you want to keep it? pretty complicated where the PCs have to do something special to get there mm-hmm. or a wizard has to do it or as soon as they hit fifth level spells get plane shift they can go off and do their own thing uh, wizards their own device and at risk of being a spoiler alert something goes really sideways with an artifact <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute we're going to see an artifact Anyway, <laughs> there's, there's going to be an artifact problem. <laughs> Good news is All right. you get that artifact. <laughs> That's you nothing new it. for Dewey. I've been in prison. <laughs> You've got the tattoo to show. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, David, you're playing. You're new to mm-hmm. the game. What kind of uh, cosmology do you want to see in a campaign that you play? Do you want it all to say just be in one simple place? Do you want it to be like Mount Olympus where heaven is just climbing up a mountain really high? How do you want it? How do you want restricted, unrestricted? How easy should it be to access these different Uh, I'm kind of leaning to unrestricted. It's just, you know, I think that would be interesting. I'm but, gonna go swim in the ocean and drown. drown. See you guys exactly. Later. <laughs> <laughs> Pop into the plane of fire. <laughs> <laughs> you know, done. No, no, seriously though. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, something that is restricted would be great because you know I'm listening to Frank talk about you know his ideas for a campaign i'm just like there's got to be some other safeguards there right (laughs) so wide open i believe was your term dave (laughs) exactly (laughs) (laughs) yeah but but sudden but suddenly reasoning is starting to settle in now so (laughs) um no but uh one of the things that i would like is kind of like a a a tiered thing like you said you you know, you mentioned Mount Olympus or, the, you know, the infinite staircase where there's like doors <clears throat> on the way climbing up and you just have different adventures going into each one, As- mm-hmm. ascending to, you know, uh, Mount Celestia. You know, you have different tiers and you have different, uh, you know, deities, demigods, what have you, you know, just um, on each level and interacting with them that would be exciting you know and the adventures there so i mean that's a newbie's perspective i mean we were all newbies once (laughs) some of that time was during the stone age for some it was you know a couple weeks ago gotcha (laughs) these are the original dungeon master and player handbook guide thou shalt follow them (laughs) (laughs) exactly (laughs) these are the three Two. <laughs> Moses, I have a problem with number eight. <laughs> All right, Scott, I know you run your own homebrew for people, yes? How do yes. the planes interact with your world? There, it, it's a very um, in, integral part of the campaign, but I'm going to echo what some of what Frank said, because he's correct in that if you let if you allow too much planar interference um, to lower level (laughs) players, they don't last very long at all. And it's not due to anything (laughs) being that, that specifically difficult. It's just, it's just the way you look at tiered play. Um, And basically 10th level is more or less my cutoff from the time that, you know, magic or wizards can start, 
you know, casting plane shift, can start casting teleport, can start casting gate, can start casting some of the some of the uh, banishment and such as that. Uh, that's when you start to you know, scratch that surface of of getting into you know this is something outside of the um, the um, normal thing that we're done that, that that we deal with. So tenth level to fifteenth level generally is where it's possible to get to one of the outer planes and you're summoning creatures from those planes, and so you have an interaction, you have you have a conversation with the uh, with the inner and outer planes. When you get past fifteenth level. You know, you need to be prepared to get your players to one of the other planes and run an adventure on those planes, because I believe that that they're at a high enough level to where their actions have consequences in some of those other planes. Uh, and then I, I want to make one quick distinction between the difference between a multiverse and a, and a plane. Um, when you're dealing with when you're dealing with mythology. You know, we're in the Forgotten Realms, for instance, right now. And 5th edition D&D is official lore. Eberron, for instance, does not exist anywhere inside Forgotten Realms. And so all of the planes that exist in Eberron do not exist in Forgotten Realms. The planes in Greyhawk do not exist in Forgotten Realms, do not exist in some of these other ones. However, you have points of crossover. You have points to where there may be, as you said, a conjunction where there's a bit of a blend over, right? You're not talking about planar travel there. You're talking about multiverse travel at that point, right? Where you're talking about really a big, a larger opening up to the expanse of the multiverse to where you would go to, for instance, you could find a way to get there, um, maybe all the way to the land of Norse myths, and you're dealing with, you know, Thor and and this that, or uh, you go to, exactly, or, or or you're going to, you know, Greek or one of these other, or you know, Egyptian. Um, those you're you're dealing now with a different set of planes. What is what are inner planes and outer planes in a different multiverse? So, or a different universe within the multiverse. So, I think that that gets to be. You really do need to restrict that. Um, I think to, you know, sub, you know, greater than 17th to if you're doing epic levels past that. So th there, there's infinite possibilities. You can really literally go anywhere you want to with it. But I agree that uh, that it does need to be somewhat restrictive until the players can get themselves out of the predicament that they, that they get themselves into. But here's what I'm going to agree with David. Once they do cross that threshold, it should be fairly unrestricted. Sure. But it's just, it's like you cross a Rubicon and there's really no going back after that. And you die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that actually was going to lead up to another one of my questions about where in a campaign or what levels you should run a one shot. And it sounds <laughs> like the players should have those certain aspects of survival that they should have. They should be able to breathe underwater. They should be able to put themselves off of fire. They should be able to fly that kind of deal before they even start that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, before we really go deep into that though, I just wanted a simple one. Last Tuesday, we decided to talk about pantheons. I don't know whether we talked about homebrew or not, but what are your guys' opinion on homebrewing different planes of existence it sounds like frank's really into that with his throw everything at you whatever kind of plane it is um or is it just easier when you're creating your campaign to just use the planes that are already there and don't stray too far and with be that right back i'm gonna i'm gonna i need to get a beer be right back shit i was gonna <laughs> start with him but we'll start with you That's david, david. Yeah, exactly, uh, dude. No, no, I, I, <laughs> I love the idea of creating your own plane. That, that is, that is, that sounds fun. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think you made a suggestion to one when we were talking about the show, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's where you could get as crazy with it as you want. Um, oh, the know. trash plane, right? The trash well, plane. Every I time that someone idea. casts press, a <laughs> press to digitation <laughs> and vanishes that grease, it just goes to the trash plane, and exactly God, all the things live there. 
<laughs> Atiogs, things like that. You know, it's the poop plane. Yeah. Um, no, no. I mean, that sounds a lot of fun. Uh, you know, let your imagination go wild. Sure. You know, I mean, you don't restrict yourself by learning about the planes. Now, listen to David. Just make them up as you go. You along. go along exactly. Says, Screw the book. The Manual of Planes, garbage. Just make up your own planes. That's what yeah. Dungeon Master Sky PHB. Just throw them away. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just bullshit. <So. laughs> But uh, no, no, it seems like that would be a lot of fun too. But, you know, of course you got to reel it in a little bit too. You don't want to get too crazy. So, you know, sure. the plane of all food, you know. <laughs> People are like, just like, where can we go with that? Suddenly I'm thinking about Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. You know, it's just oh, a... gosh, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but like I said, you know, this is this is a voice of someone in experience. So but it, it's like we touched on, you know, I'm just starting to play a level 10 character. So I'm mm. starting to get to the upper level spells. And I mean, yeah, it's, you know, I mean, it's a whole new world. It, it is a whole new world, you know, world. like you said, fifth level spells. Damn, you know, <laughs> <laughs> All right, That's, Frank, you have your own campaign. Sorry to cut you off short there, David. No, Sounds no, like sorry. we were just droning on for a bit. So, I, so uh, <laughs> Frank, ah, you have the Phil Bar. <laughs> <laughs> you have Phil Bar. What are the planes like on Phil Bar? Are they pretty much what's written there, or are you open to having? fill bar with a whole bunch of homebrew nonsense from earlier it sounded like a whole bunch of homebrew but this is something that you have written this is something that you give away i was gonna say sell but let's be honest sell you give, give away to other yeah. people yeah. yeah in which case you know what do the planes there look like uh, again uh before you broached this idea i really didn't have a lot of interest in the the planes outer or inner i really didn't uh because for me, there's always a lot of things to do on the prime material in the Underdark and things of that nature. Now, I have used flying castles before, uh, go to a cloud giant uh, cathedral in the sky, shit like that. But actually going to the planes, really, these are the first three I've written. Uh, and I like them, but when I was doing the research on, okay, which one am I going to screw Carol over with? Uh, I was <laughs> discovering one of the major problems is... You have to be able to survive at least a few steps before you get in there. Um, and with some of the ones that I was looking at, that wasn't going to happen. Because if they didn't have fly spells and they were on the elemental plane of air, they're just going to keep dropping. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I need to put them on solid footing. So uh, with the astral plane... There was a lot of discussion online and in various supplements that, okay, it's a tube kind of thing. So I, I broke out Visio and I did some flow charts and I thought, okay, well, this pipe leads here and this pipe leads here. And I'm like, well, this is bullshit. This is just a dungeon. Um, so I made adjustments for that for Gen Con 2021. Uh, but the elemental plane of fire uh, with Carol, I thought, how do I get them there and why do I get them there? And David, it's funny that you mentioned Willy Wonka because uh, Carol's group is going to be uh, employed by the Duchess of Salt because her <laughs> daughter Veruca wants a phoenix and she wants it now. <laughs> uh, so a wizard will be sending them with payment to go buy this damn bird and i'm sure <laughs> nothing's gonna go wrong i'm sure it's gonna be fine I, i'm sure uh our new england contingent is just gonna walk in pay the money get the bird get out no problems uh but with the elemental plane of fire they're going to be given amulets with a time limit uh to handle this task so dawdling which is a staple of murder hobo inc Ain't it going to happen unless you want burned to death? Uh, so they are always going to have to keep in the back of their head, 
I have X amount of time and tick, tick, tick. It, it's, I, I can't wait. <laughs> so <laughs> they are going to have to hump. Uh, and there, there are a few surprises there, but uh, there are also a few cool things to see. I mean, they're going there for a transaction. So how are they going to be treated? If they're going to be treated okay or as visitors, who knows what the hell they're going to see uh, <laughs> if they cause a problem. Uh, the good news is I know they aren't going to burn down the tavern. It's not going to happen on the elemental plane of fire. It's not going to happen. No taverns will be burned. It's already on it's fire. Already on fire. <laughs> <laughs> they might quench a fire at a tavern. Uh, but, yeah, so I in Philbar, I don't really do that much of it, uh, hardly at all. Uh, but you're going to see We're a lot. We're growing more. a spark of interest. Oh my! Yeah. And, and again, I might D and D in its later stages. Uh, Scott probably remembers it. The EX one and two through the mm -hmm. looking glass and those. You could tell that Gary was tired. <laughs> you know what I, I just read Alice in Wonderland fuck it that's what we're doing <laughs> okay, that's right. uh, so uh, what, and, and I tried to avoid that for that reason because I'm like you know if you get cheesy like that people are going to see it but then again we've done Star Wars and we've done some other uh, art uh, yeah Christmas when Ashley took an hour to figure out we were actually doing the story of Jesus. Come on, Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the, the, uh, you, you have piqued my interest, and as has this uh, discussion, because I'm thinking uh, Stewie Griffin multiverse, uh, as well as Plains of Ghana and uh, the Nine Hells oh, and yeah. the Abyss and all that crap. Something to just brutally kill you guys. But again, uh, yeah. as you'll see on Saturday... Uh, I chose ninth level, so you're going to have fourth, ninth level players. And as some of us realize, the higher the level, the longer the combat. So right. the encounters right. have to shrink in number. Uh, but I think you're going to have a good time. Uh, and I think uh, you will see more in Philbar as the time goes on. And you can blame Kyle for that. Thank you, oh, Kyle. Welcome, <laughs> guys. So, Scott, we're coming back to you. We were talking about homebrew, prone brewing mm -hmm. your own plays, or whether as a creator of a campaign that you should maybe just take from the ones that are already there as opposed to trying to come up with something brand new yourself. But so, I also, again, want to blend more into uh, using them for campaigns versus one-shots. But answer the first question about homebrewing your own planes versus just so. Using. So I like the idea of homebrewing my own plane because... What I have to think is that a lot of the mythology that that originated is basically one group of people, one way or the other, trying to explain the physical world that they live in. So I'm going to read one one paragraph. Just promise, just one yeah. paragraph. Okay. Four from, sentences from, from maybe <laughs> maybe four sentences from from a homebrew campaign <laughs> setting that I just crapped literally maybe about like 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 two weeks ago. And it explains, because I think all mythology and pantheons need to start with some type of point of creation. That's that's where I think is common, because you're explaining how the how everything came I'm going to try to do this direction, because I have a directional mic. Good job. <clears throat> okay. <thank> <laughs> In the beginning, the great earth magan Ilio swam the vast expense of the cosmos. She swam between what we now know to be the domains of order and chance. Ilio is the one creature that remains ungoverned by the gods. She travels where she wills and pays no mind to the machinations of man or God. The Great Mother liked to travel between the domains and laugh at the worlds within. Her passing can be seen as a streak of light in the light, a light in the sky every hundred years, and her tales bring light to the night sky. She smiles at us all. So here you have a creation myth that's that starts from basically someone trying to explain something in the natural world, a common passing in the sky, right? And so from that you can have a storytelling function that creates an entire creation myth saying that this tail is a great dragon and all the stars in the sky are the little bits of her tail again, right? So I'm all about trying to find a creative spark that can then allow for creation, pantheons, cosmology, and everything going from that standpoint at all. I, I don't believe that, if, that, that the use of homebrews 
um, I, I think it encourages um, those those type of those type of things. But however, you need to have all this built out, and then you kind of need to just have it there and sitting. And this is what is hard. You don't use it for for years, <laughs> right? I mean, years literally. until your players get to level yeah. ten, and then you pull it out. You hit them right. with it. I'm going right, to but <laughs> <laughs> so so that that's really kind of the uh, the uh, point is is that and and I was remembered about this you know reading um, the uh, the um, Cimmerillion um, mm -hmm. um, you know you know Tolkien's work about how everything you know started right and it talks about how the creation of the universe and blah 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 so. My whole point is that I believe that it's very difficult to create a homebrew pantheon in a homebrew campaign setting because you can go years and years and years having a great time playing D and D to where you're just doing the, the the fun part of having a group of friends that you like hanging out with and going to the tavern and burning it down. <laughs> you know, and that's that's great. But that maybe after after you know four or five years of that players have advanced up to ninth, tenth, eleventh level. I think it's kind of nice to have to have all that other stuff written up and it allows the quick generation of backstories, of plot hooks, of all the other things that we've been talking about in, you know, between bowls for the past year really. It I think it helps to facilitate that type of creation. Um a whole lot. So that's that's my point about homebrew mythology and cosmology. What was the rest of it? <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. We're kind of coming to a close yeah. here. Yeah. And honestly, I think there was a general consensus as far as when and what level in your campaign and in your one shots that you should uh, really be doing this. And that's around tier three, also known as ninth to 15th level and beyond that point um in which case you have a lot of years to think about and plan about home brewing your own plans right i think right. has been so, the yeah. summary in general <laughs> <laughs> more or less Pretty much. Yeah. yeah yeah um so essentially we're going to save the actual planes and actually writing campaigns that involve those planes and one shots that involve those planes um for the actual between the roles i believe after this uh weekend's one shot in the plane of water where they will definitely want water genasi Dick. <laughs> <laughs> that the following tuesday we'll end up talking about the um Oh shoot! Interplanes. Interplanes is the planes of fire, water, air, earth, 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 and chaos. Dirt, chaos. Oh, positive and negative. Uh, I think that's the shadow. Yeah, uh, Fey and Feywild and shadow. I don't know what they call them yeah. in Five E. Oh, really don't. I was looking at the manual of planes, third or second edition. Which pick oh, it up, okay. guys. It's an interesting read, and it's entirely different than fifth edition these days. Um, uh, Jeff Grubb did a nice job on that. Yeah, but where he you did. also have the positive plane of you get healed until you eventually explode from being healed too much, <laughs> or you go to <laughs> the negative uh, plane and the life is sucked out of you until you're a dead, desiccated husk. But that's for next time. Uh, and <laughs> at that point, we'll talk about how you run campaigns and one shots in those places and mm. what makes them specials. In the meantime, we'll go around the table. Final thoughts. Frank, you look magnanimous. Why don't you go first? Uh, I think that's a good word, right? Yeah, that's a good word. Uh, I'm going to try and compliment each of you as we go around. So well, I'm, talk I'm, so I'm I can look up something nice to say. Uh, and say this is, this is a good topic. Uh, I don't know if it was you or Blake that came up with it, whichever one it was. Uh, it's a good topic. Uh, and I, I enjoyed pushing the boundaries of my shitty writing uh, to foist it off onto unsuspecting customers later. Uh, but I, I like the planes. It's offered me an insight on how to screw with players a little bit more. Plus, uh, we don't do a lot of one-shots of high level, so I think it'll be good to give them 
super powerful magic and then get the shit kicked out of them uh, <laughs> because they used it incorrectly. Oh, and Love don't forget that. to get a hold of us uh, if you want a bingo card uh, and a chance to win this really cool, almost glass-like dice. I really want that to is so this, cool. but I, you know, <laughs> I, I'm giving it up. Uh, so, yes, that's my two cents and change. David, please give us your high-minded high-minded uh, opinion and final thoughts yes okay um again i am coming to this with fresh eyes and um i mean i think the prospect of aspiring to be able mm. to play uh in a campaign at this level is just uh I mean, it's it, it's exciting, you know. Like I said, I'm just playing a character that's going into that tier, and I mean, this is this is just this is the kind of stuff that I was hoping to find in D and D. So, and cool. to find out that you guys actually write this stuff, you know, that you create your own homebrews. <laughs> um, I mean, that's something to I hope to aspire to someday. But you know, next month. You yeah, next month. <laughs> <laughs> we need a next. fourth level scenario that lasts two hours with four or five players. <laughs> uh, don't su don't make it suck. Don't make it <laughs> suck, <much>. man. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, Scott, my yeah. phone died, so I couldn't think of a synonym that means something nice. <laughs> That's what it Show was. Show us your That's white perfect. haired wisdom. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, 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 I think that uh, I think that David said it correctly and that, you know, it's aspirational. Right. And when you're talking about uh, when you're talking about planar travel and planar um, adventures, it is aspirational because your players are heroes. They aspire to be something greater than they are, greater than the mundane. They're not average form. You know, they're, they're not your average people. They're not peasants. They're not farmers. They're not craftsmen, they're not merchants, they're heroes. So they not, have not aspirations. Not that there's anything wrong with those uh, those particular employees. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid redneck. Jesus what? Christ, Scott, we don't alienate our audience. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's right. Got to make make America great again. So, um, <laughs> so, so uh, it is aspirational and. Um, it's 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 some of my favorite stuff too because I get to I get to really create this totally off the wall stuff, or I can just take take stuff that I've always loved since I was a little kid and put my own twist. In it. So um, you can totally create something brand new, or you can put your stamp or your your flavor or your feeling on a story that that you've loved since you were a kid, and that's what I like about this game so much anyway. So that's that's my two cents. Very much. Kyle, your two cents? Yeah, uh, I was just going to add, it is aspirational. You know, the DMs really hope they can get a game to last that long and <laughs> not lose all their players to new jobs and wives and children. Children. You're failing <laughs> at that, Kyle. I am, very much so. <laughs> I'm losing my damn mind. Garbage sack <laughs> is a toy. Don't believe what they write on it. It is a toy. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thanks for hanging around watching the episode, or if you are in the future and just decided to watch it on YouTube, thanks again. We really appreciate it. Uh, this coming Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, not that shitty Central Time or Mountain Time or Pacific Time or even that London Time, which is terrible and monarchical. Uh, you can England, catch the... I think England likes us. Does us. England like us? I think England oh, us. Oh, us. Oh, okay. I think they do. Ah, shit. Anyway. And now you've offended them. Thanks, Thanks Scott and Kyle. <laughs> Let it go. Hey, if you're stupid enough to be watching this fucking show. <laughs> I drink tea and I have a queen. Ooh, I'm fancy. <laughs> Let's put something on top of something else. <laughs> <laughs> and no viewers. <laughs> All right. Anyway, join us this following Saturday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, to watch the Boston Red Sox play through the plane of fire and 
<laughs> enjoy that. Get a bingo card. It's oh, probably man. not going to get filled out, so throw a bunch of stuff in chat and hope someone actually reads it and says it out loud on the screen. <laughs> Other than that, everybody <laughs> wave, <laughs> say goodbye, uh, watch this 